Oh, one, two, three. We are not live. We are not live, but we are alive. Lovely Gary. Hello, my darling. How are you? I'm fine, Rachel. How are you? I'm very, very well. A little stressed because it's that time of year. Uh, but before we talk about that, lovely YouTuber, welcome to our channel. Today, we are going to be playing with our watercolours in a grid formation and making some lovely little decorations. So hopefully you'll stick around for that. Uh, of course, as always, if you want to go straight to that instructional exercise, I will put the time code below for you. But uh, do remember, if you like our content, we would love a like. We would love you to hit that button. It does help us into the algorithm. So if you feel so inclined, please press that button for us. And of course, we love your comments. Someone commented last week that um, one of our videos, Gary, brought her great joy in her heart. I thought, what an amazing thing. So we always reply to the comments and we would love to hear from you. And of course, if you can subscribe to the channel, that helps us as well. And if you can go even further, I know it's a step further, hit the bell, ding, 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 because that notifies you when we load our content, which is at least every Friday so please do uh, all of that stuff if you can but if you can't do any of that and you just want to watch us well here we are we're going to have a little chat now about um, how to sort of let go of the stress at this time of year but as I say if you want to crack on with the video and you want to do some painting you can hit that time code but here we are lovely Gary so yes I mean as I sit here right now I am looking at this in front of me so we know what time of year it is because you love youtube yeah. might be watching and it's summertime but for us oh and you know what i feel like doing at this point gary i i feel like just doing that right i'm invisible i'm invisible no mm. make it go away mm. make it go away because it is a very stressful time of year isn't it um you know christmas is around the corner we you know we're both running our own businesses <laughs> But even if people are just kind of working a full time job every day, all day, you've got this whole thing of I've got to organize food. I've got to do my wrapping. I've got to do my shopping. I haven't even started yet. I've got to do my shopping. I've got to think about all of those things as well. I, who, who am I buying for? What are Christmas cards? Oh, my! I've got to write. The, I've got to make the Christmas cards. And it can really ruin the spirit. Yeah, of Christmas. yeah, yeah. Absolutely become too overwhelming and stressful. So what do we do, Gary? What are your well, tips on that? What, do, what we do? do we do? Well, first of all, you don't set yourself up with all these activities that you're going to do so marvellously, so wonderful. And who actually are you pleasing? Are you pleasing yourself? Is that an ego thing? You want to provide this amazing Christmas for everybody and because you want to look good about it. Well, yeah, that's fine. And it's nice to put a little bit of something special into a Christmas, but actually don't go so far as actually you're just setting yourself up to get one, get really stressed, to try and, you know, try and do everything, be everything to everybody. And actually by the time Christmas comes or Christmas days comes, you're in such a bad mood, you're Mr. or Mrs. Grumps and no one's really having a good time because you're stressed out or you've run yourself ragged. So I think the first thing really is to actually give yourself a, um, an achievable amount of work, nothing over the top. That's, I think, is the main thing. I mean, I, or, I, mean, I have lists. I'm a great list person. I have not just one list. I have several lists. I have the shopping list on the go, on the side. I have jobs to be done for that day, maybe jobs to do that are, like, in the future that <laughs> need to be looked at. I'm a list person. Um, I think the lists are a really good idea. But I think also in those lists, actually plan them for days and put them into small chunks because i think if you write buy gifts for everyone oh that can seem absolutely overwhelming but if you say right you know on this day i'm going to give myself an hour to do some internet i mean wherever you can do online shopping and i'm not saying that you have to go to the big players like amazon because some people might sit here and go well no what about independence independent retailers a lot of them have online shopping so i think if you can do it online you know if you haven't got the time to have a full day of christmas shopping which quite frankly i find so stressful um go online but write that day and that time that you're going to do it so you know, I know that I'm working, but between two and three o'clock, I haven't got anything. I haven't got a meeting. I haven't got to record this. And if you're doing a regular job and you're working from home, well, oh, in my lunch hour, I could buy a present for Sandra, Tracy. I could do my friends. And then in four days, I could do these relatives. And then I could look for my husband or my wife. And, do you know what I mean? Break it down yeah, in manageable yeah. chunks. 
And then I think, as you say, put the lines through. So that's one thing that I would say. Absolutely is, makes sense. I think it's keeping presents simple. They could be homemade presents. It could be a simple, I mean, I'm a great one for cooking. I've got a whole stack of um, preserves and things in the cupboard that I make throughout the years, and my jams and my chutneys and everything like that. I have given just a simple chutney that I've made with a cheese in a little basket or just wrapped up, and that's a present. And people really love that. Yeah, and I think as part of that, Gary, it's about, I mean, I've been just talking about this in the podcast interviews I've been doing. One of the main themes that people keep talking about is how you have to let go of unrealistic expectations Mm -hmm. of other people Mm -hmm. and of yourself. And I think in Christmas as well, I think it's letting go of the expectations um, of yourself, of other people, but also the fantasy of Christmas, because let's face it, we see all the American films, we see all the adverts. It's not like that in reality. You know, we have relatives who come to the, meet other relatives that don't particularly like them there are stresses there are arguments or whatever so let's not try and create in our heads this picture perfect christmas let's just think about who do we want to see you know what do we want to do what do we want to eat and let's not imagine that huge feast on the american movies and let also as well i would say it's ridiculously expensive so just see it as a nice meal that you're coming together yeah. with people. What would you serve on a regular meal? You wouldn't have 22 dishes on the table. And if you are cooking for your family, they will appreciate it that you've cooked. I think there is a circle. There is a return to much more the simple way of life. And I think even the, what we've been over in these last three years, I think we're beginning as a, as a, as a population to actually realise that, that perhaps things don't need to be quite as complicated, even though <laughs> we're being told, oh, it must be as complicated as this and this is. Of course, because that's consumerism. That's what they, people want us to do. Consume, buy. Yeah. But actually, you only have to buy a little bit or make something. That's, you know, that's my key thing. Or just tell someone or invite someone. You know, don't have to buy them a big present. Invite them round. Yeah. However, I'm still stressed about the Christmas shopping because I'm starting. <laughs> It's, I think it's a little bit parcel and parcel of Christmas. It's to be a little bit stressed, but don't let it become like the whole big thing. No. So this is why I thought I'm not today. I thought what we do is something creative, a little creative doodling. Um, and it's not it's not Christmassy at all, because I think sometimes that go for a walk around the block idea, take some time out, make is makes you much more productive. So if you've got a day where you've got loads on your, you know, you find yourself, oh, my God, I've got this, this and do and I need to tick this off and I need to tick that off. What you must do is you must take at least like 10, 20 minutes out, just calming the mind because, yeah. in fact, you're, you're not being productive. Because what happened, I don't know what happens to you. What happens to me is I'm like, I'm going like, I go upstairs. Why am I upstairs? Oh, I come back down again. And sometimes I've done that twice thinking, what was it I went upstairs for? And it's because you're trying to do so much. You are on automatic pilot. Think, right, I'm going to collect that thing from upstairs. But by the time you got there, you're, as you're going up the stairs, your brain is saying, oh, but don't forget you've got to do this. And then your brain's gone over to that area. It's overloaded. Yeah. It's overloaded. So and I, and I will that. say, I've got an example of that from last night, Gary, that I was, I had a very stressful day yesterday. And then we are entering a Mercury, Mercury retrograde. So the technology started going wrong yesterday. I couldn't get my phone to work mm. as a camera. I was getting so stressed. And then I got this message from my friend and he said, are we still doing a Zoom chat? You know, because I used to be at drama school with him. And he was like, are we still having a Zoom chat? And you know, for a, for a second I thought, I've got to get this done. And then I thought, no, actually, I'm going to say yes. And you know something? We just chatted for about 45 minutes on Zoom. We had a real giggle. And I was like, at the end of it, I was like, I'm so glad I took that time out for myself. I'm so glad that I took that time and had a laugh with a friend. So, yes, it wasn't being creative, but it was just de-stressing. Whereas I could have carried on swearing at the computer. I I just shut all that stuff down. And I opened the Zoom window and we and we talked and laughed for 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah the best medicine. Yeah, absolutely. So let's do some <laughs> lovely creative creative okay. time right now. Um, right, so we're theme. going to death. Yes, let's right. do it. Okay, right. So we're going to cover a few things. So if you've been following us regularly, some of these things are not going to be unfamiliar to you. So a piece of paper, but I've used quite a nice sort of good quality paper. But if all you've got is a piece out of the, the printer, then just use that. So this is just uh, an A4 size. But again, it can be any size. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this piece of paper up into four sections to work in. So I've got four like doodle ideas on the go. 
you could, if you haven't got, which I'm going to divide up with some masking tape. If you haven't got any masking tape, Rachel, I know you're going to use some washi tape. Yeah, um, I'm putting that on right now. If you wanted just to divide this piece of paper up into four, then cut it into four and just work on four pieces of paper. So I'm going to use some masking tape. So I'm just going to put some masking tape down. I'm going to divide through the middle that way. I'm going to divide all the way down that way like so. so i've got it like that and just smooth it all down yes i could go around the outside but really i don't really need to i'm not really going to do that i'm just going to just uh, i've just got my four sections to work in i've got some paper towel um for i always have a bit of paper towel by the side of me one if i spill anything i can mop it up in fact we're going to use this to actually just dab up what we're going to put into these four squares I've got my um, always, as always, two jam jars, clean water, one for clean water, one for cleaning the brushes. I've got a biro or a pen. This is just a permanent uh, waterproof, fade proof pen, but it could be any biro, any biro that's lying around, pick that up. Um, <clears throat> and I've got some paints. But, you know, if you haven't got coloured paints, like these are watercolour paints, um, in fact, the inspiration came from, I was watching something online and actually what they did is they just used a very strong cup of coffee and they just started a doodle art with a strong cup of coffee. So if you've got no paints, you might have some ink, you might have some uh, food kind of something like that. You can start off at least one of them with that or if you can have four of them. Um, I've got a hairdryer only because I want to speed the process up for drying because we're going to dry it and then we're going to work into it. But if you haven't got the hairdryer or you've got a little bit of time, it might be an opportunity to do the wet work, go away, do another little bit of a job, which we were talking about, you know, maybe breaking up your day and just sort of relaxing. What you could do is you could just add all the wet media, leave it, walk away, get on with something else and then treat yourself to something. I'm going to come back to that when that's dried. might take about half an hour to an hour to dry naturally. And then you could go back to it. So you could split this activity up into two sections, which might actually help you through your day. All right, what we're going to do. So I've got a little paintbrush, any brush really. And I've got here, because I want to make something I can pour. I want to pour into these sections. So I'm just going to get some water. I'm going to get some water, quite a bit of water into the lid that I can get. So I've got some, a little bit of water in there. I'm going to just pick up a really quite a strong colour. So I'm going to just pick up a nice strong colour in there and I'm just going to mix that in. So I've got, you see that, but there's a, that's all like liquid in there. And I'm just going to just pour that in to the section. So I'm just going to just dab that in, in like that. That's all I'm going to do. So I'm just going to leave that like that. And then I'm going to perhaps get another colour. So I'm going to do four sections of just something I've dribbled in. So I'm just going to, if you've only got the one lid, then use your paper towel just to clean that one out. So we're not, what we don't want to end up with is a load of muddy colours. So if they're nice bright colours, you can add them in. So I'm going to just pick another bright colour. Just going to add this into there. This one's a nice light red colour this time. Ready colour. Nice and red as possible. Anyway, I'm going to just pour that in. Just pour that in. That'll do. Just have that there. And repeat. So we're going to do, I'm going to do four bright colours. Make Try and make them as bright as possible. Let's see. I like bright colours because I think it just sort of adds... One, you can see it really nice. And I think bright colours can also sort of mentally help you as well, make you feel more cheerful because they're bright and they're nice and colourful. I think they just make it really quite nice. So I'm just literally, they're just they're just on there at the moment. They're just la laying there. They're pools of water, pools of... I'm going to get a cleaner lid. I don't want to mix my colours up. What colour should I... Oh, I think I might go for... I think I might go for a nice bright green colour. I'm going to just get some water into here. So secret is true. You could always pour. I mean, if you wanted to, you could just do a few drips of water into the lid like so if you wanted to. But I've been dabbing it in with my brush. I'm going to do a nice, really nice bright green in there. I'm a bit palette. green. Isn't that funny? I just literally started You've just done a green. Yeah. So again, you can just splatter that on. Splatter that on there like that. Don't matter how it's formed. Don't try and manipulate it too much at the moment because the whole thing is is just 
trying to, because we've been overthinking or over stressing our little brains are going. So it's just what I'm doing is I'm giving you a, like a process or a technique that you can just do. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to manipulate it and play. But in a minute, we're going to then just start to work into each one of these little things. So now the water can be out the way. So we can put the water to one side and I'm just going to get some paper towel. And I'm literally going to just lay the paper towel. You see, I've just laid it on there. I'm just going to lay it down. I'm not going to, I'm not rubbing the paper towel. I'm just letting that just soak up. I'm just letting it soak up the paint. So I'm just letting that soak up the paint now. And then I'm going to just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then carefully, because I don't really want to smudge it, I'm going to carefully lift that off like that. So that's just lifted off. For this stage now, I'm going to just dry it. Okay, so I've dried that with hair dry. just got that nice and dry. And then with my pen, what I'm going to do now, so the first sort of like technique to do, and you can do these to all of them, is actually just use the pen just to outline the whole of the, almost like the ink spot, this splat of this ink. So you can just go around. And just use that to just follow the contours of where the paint's gone. So you're just going to use your pen and you're just going to follow that. So while, you, while you're doing this, this is just making your eye and hand coordination work. You don't have to overthink. You're just following the line. So if this is very similar to sometimes when they say just concentrate on your breathing. So you're, all you're concentrating on is a movement and just following where the naturally where that ink started to just or paint started to go. So like that. And if you've got separate areas, you can go around the contours. Mine's looking like a like almost like a, an island, this one, this first one. So you can just do and go around the outside. So, Rachel, how have you done? Have you just gone round the outside of yours? Let's have um, a look. Let's I'm just bring about in. to. So is this with just a black pen, did you say? Yeah, just to, just do it with a black pen. Just going round the outside of the contours where it's just marked, so if you can see it. So that's why I quite like to use dark colours or nice bright colours so you can really see. That's nice. Right? Yours are actually really spread out wonderfully. Yeah. So you're just going to... So imagine these as like little islands, you know, like little, like almost like the Canary Islands, really, just out there in the scene. You've got little islands off of them, little spots where maybe you've got other paint that's worked as well. That's really quite nice. Oh, I, li I like this one as an exercise because I, I was just thinking as I was mixing my paints, I found even that sort of mindful, just, you know, mixing the paint, using some water, looking at how yeah. the, the colour was coming as a depth of colour. Nice. It is quite nice. And yeah, just and just the process is not overtaxing the mind. It's not making you feel like, oh, my God, I've got to get it right or wrong. This is you just let this be. Let it be what it is. So I'm just going around, I'm going to do all the edges of all of them. I'm just going to do that, which I quite like, quite nice. So this is really, it's a very similar to a lot of the techniques that we've tried before, but slightly different. So it's a slightly different angle on just following the edges, the edge line of where that paint has settled and dried. Yeah, I mean, I have to say we're sort of, racing through this because we're recording it but I think if you were to really take your time with this it would be such a lovely exercise to, to play with yeah I like it I'm just going around all of them last one for me this red one over here yeah and as you say don't sort of think too much about the edges don't worry that you've gone in no. you've gone out no. I do live at how we've got our little merry gang I mean I'm sure there are a lot of people who, who I know there are because um clearly we've had 40,000 views in the last three months of our videos have we well that's very good yes yeah, it, it popped up 
Um, and I just thought, you know something, if we have helped, even let, let's take example, let's take a tiny percentage of those views. Say, say, do you know what? I'm going to go really tiny. Let's say 40 people, which I don't know as a percentage because I'm rubbish at maths, but I'm thinking that's like 0.0 point something percent. If we've yeah. helped 40 people, if they've done our things and they've really enjoyed what we've done, how fabulous is that, Gary? Well, that's it's amazing because, you know, that is 40, even if it's just 40 people, it's 40 people that we have interacted Expected. with or given yeah. them some inspiration. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And um, we must give a shout out. I mean, we've got so many regulars. We've got Michelle in Scotland, who I know is a huge active viewer of ours. We have yeah. had, um, Linda. Linda Smart is one of our, she's one of your art class viewers, but she always checks in. Julie Downs. And we've got, of course, Dawn, Dawn Tornes um, in America um i know that there are others who check in regularly but um those are sort of names that they're always very active on instagram and facebook and they post their things but i know i, I get emails from people saying you know I, I just love what you did this week and i'm going to have a go this weekend and my grandchildren are over i'm going to play with them and i just think that is just so fantastic so thank you so much to everybody who has yeah. been with us yeah yeah absolutely so you've got their lovely Rachel, what you've done there, beautiful. And there's some, you know, some of them look quite, mine look like mine are very islands. I've got, I can feel islands with yours, but yours are sometimes, especially that lower yellow one looks quite organic to me. It looks like something growing. Yes. Yeah. Really nice. So when you've gone round the edge of all of them, what you've got to think is well, what else can you add? So you can add decoration, you can decorate and put lines. So when I say decorate, they could be scallop lines that you you put in they could be straight lines they could be little dots that you put in they could be in on the color or they could be on the outside so think about what's going around on the outside so could you have like is there lines going radiating off of it so do you have like little curved lines radiating off from maybe your your islands do you have more within inside the island so do you put loads of like little round circles so just keep the marks simple so you're not really drawing or trying to represent anything these are more like as i always say it's about decorative little marks doodle marks that are repetitive you're just filling up the spaces with the marks that you're making so you can work outside of my little island i can continue doing my stripes all the way round coming round through, or I can go within my islands or my little blobs, my inks, spots, and I can create shapes within them. So it's about filling up now either the space outside the shape or within the shape or both. So there's a lot here that you can do. You don't have to do, again, you don't have to do this all in one go. You might think, all right, I'm going to just give myself 10 minutes just to fill out one of them. I'm going to then go and do something, another task. Maybe it's you've got those Christmas decorations to wrap up. Maybe you think, well, I'm going to just go and wrap up a couple more presents or I might need to go and cook something and then I can come back. Or while that's resting in the oven or working in the oven, doing its thing, you'll come back and then you're do a little bit more into your drawing. So it's something to sort of reward yourself with is to come back and just take a little bit of time out just to do a little bit more decoration into your ball doodles. Now, you don't have to have four. You can make one big doodle. And in fact, the one that I found that inspired me was that one which was literally, I sent it to you, Rachel, which was literally someone would have made this most amazing strong cup of coffee i even think it was like some sort of double espresso or something they took a bit of paper and they just threw or dribbled that what was left in the bottom of that cup just over the page and then did exactly the same you just blot it out dry it and then you draw, start to draw into it so any when you're drawing into any of those marks you can do whatever you want so i've done all like radiating lines out of this one this one, I'm going to continue doing my circles. What have you done, Rachel? What have you got in your... Oh, oh, that's yes. nice. Well, and do you know what this... Um, when I'm doing this, what this actually reminds me of is, strangely enough, what we were just saying there about what we're doing is radiating out to people. 
And it is like ripples, isn't it? It's like ripples in a, you know, you put a pebble in and it ripples out. And I feel like almost like sound waves, you know, we're doing what we're doing and it's it's rippling out to people, um, yeah. which is really nice. So with this as well is what I'm just thinking then is some of the things that we've done in the past have, you know, they have maybe it's a technique or you've got a um, an outcome like we've done trees, we've done flowers, all sorts of things. But this one doesn't have to represent anything. This one is just about just doing a repetitive mark making, however you want to, just creating patterns. It doesn't have to represent anything. It is just what it is. And it just is a nice sort of relaxing doodle. And as I say, sometimes we need a starting point. That's what I thought well, I would give you today. It's just a couple of starting point techniques, something to get you started, and then you can run with it. You can create your own version of this doodle process. That yeah, you and, you know, I think this is something that we said in the very beginning, way back when, Gary, when we were 18 years old when we started this channel. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's been going on that long. But you know, we did say that, obviously, you know, for years and years and years and years and years, people have been doodling. It's that whole thing of people used to open the phone book and they would make a phone call and while they were doing it, they would scribble. And yes. so it's not a new thing. And there is a reason people do it. It's because it's lovely and relaxing um and um it's a nice meditative thing to do but i think sometimes if someone said to you okay sit down and just doodling where do you start you know and and some people would go oh i'll just write my name or i'll just do a circle and it doesn't develop this is a great place yeah. to get you started yeah it is i mean i used to do you remember when we were at school we used to have jotters or journals that we could gen just have on our desk to make notes in, but they always ended up to be more of a doodly type thing while we were listening to the teacher or to the lecture or whatever and just yeah. use those for that. So, um, yeah. And of course, with technology, we don't have those things so much anymore. We might do a recording on our phone or, you know, um, or be on a keyboard. Make a TikTok. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's not quite the same, but at least you're actually playing with some, you know, I mean, I did it the other day when I decorated my house. I made a little reel out of that, you know, and it was quite good fun. It was it was a nice sort of creative thing to do, actually. Although it did drive me mad trying to do all the transitions in the end. I thought I'm creating more stress here than I am. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, because that is your go-to, which is nice and creative for you. It's all your social media filming and, and bits and pieces that you really, you, you know, you do enjoy doing it and you really... Yeah. You see that in the outcomes, but then what you've got to then keep a happy balance that actually you don't want it then to become onerous and a task. No. It's, you've got to keep that happiness. So, again, and that's down to sometimes we set ourselves too high, um, you know, like we want it to be absolutely perfect. And sometimes trying to achieve perfection can be quite stressful. So I think we need to see, no, it doesn't have to be perfect. We might not get all the transitions right in the film or something like that. So we just accept it. You know, I, I just reminded as well of another email I got from a chap called Robert, um, whose wife was a, the sewer of the family and came on to our workshops. And then he joined in and he did your um, your sausage dog class. Um, oh, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Robert lives in Canada. And he yes, yes. Yeah, he sent me a lovely email one day and he just said, um, he was saying he couldn't make it to a class he'd booked, but he was going to get the recording afterwards. Um, and he said, but on another note, he said, I want you to know, um, he said, you did actually um, ponder out loud as to if anybody actually watched you and painted along with you when you were doing your sessions. He said, you know, you were sort of saying, I wonder if people just skip, you know. And um yeah, and he said, I want you to know that I I do watch them all. He said, I really enjoy the mindfulness. He said, I often sit and paint and draw with you. And I find them all really interesting. And I love hearing your viewpoints. And that, once again, I just went, wow, that's... Because I never would have thought... I I knew him from our classes, but I never would have thought... That's amazing. Watching oh, them. that's so nice. And, you know, anyone out there, please tell us that, because that does make it... It makes it very... Rather than just us two bantering on in front of a camera or, you know, just us. It's so nice to hear feedback. Other people are listening to us or even, you know, give us your opinions. What do you think? Um, really important because this isn't just 
the Carrie and Rachel show. This is a like a community thing for everyone yeah. to take either use or take part in and to contribute to. I love it. In fact, I've been, you know, I'm doing this here and I'm looking up on the screen and see what you do. And I'm finding that, you know, we inspire each other and think, oh, that's what you're doing as a doodle. I might try that doodle in amongst mine as well. Yeah. And just sort of filling out the, the spaces in between. Yeah. Um, when you've got to that sort of like you've started to fill up. Um, now, there's nothing to say that you can't then, if you wanted to, add other things. So if you wanted to say um, you've just done stripes, so stripes, you could put a colour into them as well. If you've got some colouring pencils, you could add colour into those. I'm just looking at my colour pencil, so I've got colour pencil. So this one with a stripe in, I could just start to then colour in with the, the colouring pencil and just then add in another colour. So it doesn't just have to stop with the 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 main colour that almost like the the um, the ink splot and then the pen. Then you once you started making marks on it or done a pattern, then you can grab another pen or you can grab a pencil or you might have your paints there with you and then you can start colouring them in it in as well. So it doesn't have to just stop at that stage. Another thing I quite like doing, which reviews used to do earlier on as well, is if you've got Maybe if you want to just, you could just tap a little bit of colour over the top. So if you've still got some colour that's wet on your palette, just check it's still wet. You can always just tap a little bit of paint on the top if you want to just add a little bit of interest to it, which always I always find quite nice. Just to add a few little paint marks as well, because sometimes what I do with, especially with my little, um, my watercolour palette, I don't close the lid um, until it's dried out because the inks they've all all the paints they've all got wet in there so what i tend to do, i don't tap i don't pat them with a bit of um towel or anything like that to dry them off what i do is i just leave it on the side to just naturally dry out and then your paint should last quite a long time they shouldn't sort of run out too quickly um so that's just a little sort of tip that i tend to do i'm just adding i love doing a splat <laughs> <laughs> i do right I'm going to have yes, to wipe all my over desk. your computer on last week's episode, as I remember. Uh, well, yes, yeah, so you've got to watch out. If you've got the computer near or anything, especially when you've got fluids and liquids around, you've got to be quite careful of what, what you're doing. But no, I think that looks quite nice. Now, if what I'm going to do, so if you have used tape um, to sort of like cordon it out, and just I'm sure you'll remember me from saying this before, but if you warm the tape up, rather than at this point, just trying to rip the tape off and just reveal your four images. If you warm it up with the hairdryer, then it's easier to get away. So it's easier to pull away without taking the paper with it. So I just usually just warm it up. And again, it's just a technique. If you if you take transfer this technique to even doing anything decorating wise, and quite often we use masking tape for decorating, get really nice clean lines. Again, you need to warm the tape up before you pull it away because it just pull the paint away with it. So just a little technique. And you see, while it's warm, it comes off so easily, comes off in one big strip. But the, I think another thing, a mistake we can make is think, oh, right, we'll get the other bit. While we've been taking that bit off, this bit gets cold. So warm that up again. So when you keep, don't be afraid to go back and warm it up. <laughs> Rachel, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> all right. Does it come off? Yeah. That's great. That's lovely, Rachel. Woo! Very good. Yeah. Really, really good. Nice. And actually, you've really filled up your spaces really well. You've put loads of mark making in there, a lot of doodling going around. Very good. Yeah, I like it. So now, presumably, you could cut those and you could, I think if you actually cut them, because it looked nice at the border, if you just cut them and then mount them on another piece of card. Yeah. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm going to do that. Have I got my, um, I don't know if I've got my scalpel here. Just oh, watch out. I'm just going to cut, I'm just going to cut one actually. He's got a little play. Um, that was another thing that Julie, Julie Downs emailed me and said, you know, Rachel, should I absolutely love um, seeing you build up your paint collection? Should it just makes my heart sing? Oh, oh, that's so nice. That yeah, is lovely. Collection. So I would probably use a scalpel almost with a ruler, but I just want to show yeah, you the bean. So let's just square that off. And then if you imagine, where's my ad? Here we are. So now if you were to now mount this, can you see how now it becomes? Look at that. Yeah. Now, nice. Rachel, this is... 
this is your naturally now doing this. We've talked about mountain work, luxury borders, making the what the work in the middle looks really, really important. And so that's what you just now you see that. So rather than just you cut it up and that's it. If you wanted to mount it, if you wanted to, you particularly have one that you really liked, having that white border or a, even it could be a colored piece of paper. And it just makes that piece of artwork in the middle really, really sort of much more precious and much more special, doesn't it? Yeah, Lovely. I like it. Really good. Yeah. Very really good. Great stuff. Right, should we come back into view? Let's come back into view. Mm. Well, it is now time for us to stop, lovely Gary. Um, so thank you so much for bringing that uh, to the session today. Um, and thank you, of course, you lovely YouTuber. Please give us a like if you've enjoyed yourself, if you like what we've done, give us a like, give us a thumbs up there. And uh, also subscribe and hit the bell and do all that stuff. Or leave comments because, as I say, it helps us to get our message out. And if you're enjoying it, other people may enjoy it as well. But it's so easy to just become completely buried in the algorithm. I don't think the algorithm knows what to do with us, actually, Gary, because it goes, are you mindfulness? Are you spiritual guidance? Are you watercolouring? Are you just redoing? <laughs> Who are you, people? But we I'm don't want to be in a box. We you don't can't put us box. in a box. No, don't put us in a box. No. No. Um, <laughs> lovely. Okay. Well, we will see you again, of course, in our next tea time tutorial. We're going to keep going through the Christmas holidays. We are. We're keeping it going. Just join in and make that time for yourself. Make that space. Just give yourself 10 minutes to do some doodling. And uh, it's very easy to clear away what we've just got today. And very easy to grab what we've got today as well. So, yeah, make that, cha make that change. That was someone's. Anyway, make that time for yourself. Right, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, okay. lovely people. Bye! <laughs>